uh, you probably, I mean, there are very uh, well-known uh, thing in the genome lately is this notification, these bubbles that you you see in Ubuntu, for example. And I, I think most of the, the distributions are shipping with uh, this notification daemon, which shows these bubbles for you, or system updates. And uh, there are several applications that use this to, for example, Rhythmbox shows these bubbles when a new track is play, being played, and so on. So this uh, this. Uh, solution is based on a on a daemon which shows those bubbles and a client library which is libnotify which is the thing that is being used by the applications to show the bubbles there. And this is based on a draft specification made by Kristen Hammond and others. Uh, and we wanted to be kind of compliant with this thing. So we implemented in a kind of different way. Our backend is not uh, doesn't imply any kind of specific user interface. I mean, we don't implement in our backend the bubble. We implement just the model, and then you can apply this backend in any kind of user interface that you want. So you can reuse the co the compliant implementation of the notification backend in different user interfaces. And but we needed to add two different things here. The first thing is, I don't know if you ever noticed that, but the notification sometimes has support for actions. So you see the bubble, but you see some buttons where you can do different things inside. So you basically do this by defining in the client side a callback if a certain action is activated. But in our case, we wanted to have uh, a way to call dbus callbacks instead of a callback in the client li library, in the client side. So what we do is create a wrapper library around libnotify, which adds just uh, this dbus action support. So you can define an action and say, if you activate this action, you call this, you, you send this dbus message. For example, just a practical example. If like a new mess message in your from a friend of you arrives, when you click, you want to activate uh, the, the chat window, for example. And this is a debug support. And this should not, in our case, be defined in the client library. Or something that you just define and then the notification backend takes care of it. And the other thing is persistence. We needed to have a way to, to guarantee that if, for example, you're using your device and, and suddenly something crashes, when you turn on again, you, the notifications are still there. So we needed to persist uh, certain notifications. Uh, but in the end, if you are an application developer, you want to use our notification uh, backend, you, would, you could use just libnotify, as you do for you know, for example. And, but if you want to have the bus uh, action support, you need to use our wrapper library. Let me just show more or less how the thing is working now. So, my neck will break now. So I had... Something like this. Just a rough example, but anyway. So you create a notification. In our case, you can, I mean, it's, it's in the spec, of course. You can set the sound when the, the notification is sent, and so on. You can even define the latch pattern and this kind of thing. Uh, and then you send the notification. So in practice, what would happen is something like... <laughs> run, if you send several notifications here, 
you would see something like this thing blinking here, and then you see the notifications there. So you can do this with the standard API for notifications, if you know. Okay. <coughs> Just follow me. Okay, we have a set of uh, kind of beauty plugins. So I said that we have several types of plugin loaders. There are plugins that we know that will kind of always be there for our user interface. So we don't make them a separate shared object, but you, we put in the, in the same uh, binary so that we can load them faster. So they received some uh, additions. In terms of compatibility, in the, so the window list is a little bit thicker so that you can use your thumb to select the windows. The notification UI that I've just showed you. And the applications menu now it's new. It's not just a boring boring menu, but something like this. And then you can and then you can use your thumb to select the applications quickly. Okay. So these are like small changes but make difference, I think, in the, in the daily usage of the device. So I said that we, are, we try to avoid a lot uh, MIMO specific behaviors in our UI so that you don't need to change the source codes for that. So we implemented uh, something that we call UI policy, which uh, allows you to filter the plugin list. So you have something that is configured there and you want to, for example, enforce that a certain plugin, certain plugins will always be there or if a plugin fails, what happens and this kind of thing. So you can define this specific behavior in a dynamic way. You don't need to put it in the core, in the, 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 source, the source code of human desktop for that. And every time we, we needed to, uh, to add something that it's kind of specific to us. We made it a configuration setting and not something in the source code itself. So for example, uh, we wanted to have a way that when a new plugin is installed on certain containers, uh, the plugin is loaded automatically. So if you install like a home plugin uh, in your device, then it pops up in home automatically. So we, want, we didn't want to have it in the source code of field on desktop, but we made it like a setting. So you, you set your container to load new plugins in case they are installed. And so So there is this trend that to make things look cool. <laughs> and probably we will see, I mean, uh, one of the first talks in, in Guadalajara was about, the, the Ryan Lotti uh, talk was a little bit about making things look cool. So, and, it, uh, and, and actually it's quite related to what we did here. Uh, the approach that Ryan describes in this talk is basically what was done here with some small variations. And in what we did was to, to do indirect rendering of the home plugins in a way that you can add some alpha masks in the plugin. So I will show some examples here. But uh, basically we use XRender to, uh, to apply the alpha blending uh, X composite to do the indirect, to redirect the, the output to a buffer so we can do stuff there. X image to keep track of changes in, in each window and we take from the theming, from the Pixmap theming, the alpha mask that should be applied. So in the end, we have something like this. I don't know if you notice, but the panel is translucent. It's buggy, of course, because it's bad. <laughs> but anyway, so you have this thing here. Uh, and this alpha mask comes from the theme. So if you have a background image, from your team that has an alpha channel, then this thing will, will be taken into account when applying the team in the panel. And in, in the case of plugins, for home, 
we, we, you, now you can do not only those square stuff, but something like like this, for example. <laughs> A4 equals sync is not true. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, this is a, a fake plugin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's, uh, I mean, it's something that you could do. So uh, that's the point. How much time do we have? We've got another 15 minutes. Uh, okay. uh, we've been trying to consider the Hilton desktop as a desktop. So uh, this means in practice that we are trying to be, as much as we can, com compliant with the well-known uh, desktop standard <coughs> from free desktop. So I'm saying there that we like FDO, but I mean, in practice, we don't like that much. But <laughs> I mean, because we are not that compliant, uh, uh, but we are trying. So the startup notification is under development now, but it will be in the device soon. So we will be compliant. The menu spec involves some, some bigger um, coding efforts, so it will take a little bit more time, but we, our goal is to be fully compliant with the menu spec and desktop entry spec and so on. The sister spec is there. This is something really cool, I think. So this means that if you use GTK status icon, it will appear in status bar. So you don't need to implement a status bar plugin to put something there. So if you use DTK status icon, it will just be there. Uh, and desktop notification that I already mentioned before, so it's compliant. Ah, okay, this is cool too. Is there anyone from Ubuntu Mobile or Ubuntu? Oh, okay. So uh, it's really cool to, to see that uh, there are other people uh, interested in using the Hidden stack on different, in different ways. So uh, the Ubuntu Mobile Edition will probably ship something based on Hidden, and uh, this is a mockup. This is not like true uh, fully working thing, but the fact that most of the things were already packaged, and as far as I know, there is something running already, right? Yes. Okay, so. And they will have a different UI, but I mean, that's the point of a framework. You have different things based on the same code base. So we hope, we hope that we didn't make your life so crappy <laughs> on implementing this thing. But we are trying to, to help as much as we can to, to make this thing uh, work because it's of our interest to have like uh, uh, first uh, a big user base and second more contributors to the, to the code. So it's really interesting to have something like this. And probably this Ubuntu Mobile Edition will, in the first moment, will run on the Intel mobile internet devices. The need or might, I don't know. So what are we planning for the future? Yeah, as I said, most of the, the work that we are doing now is to make the our source code may look like the same thing. And of course, being more compliant and, and so on. But uh, there is this big challenge to make things like exciting, not just something that works. And, and there is, of course, there is this critics um, on our current user interface, this, which is that it is too complicated for a normal person, not for us, like the city stuff. So we need to simplify the user interface. We need to make it like the, the I don't like this term, but I, I put just because it's the, the, the thing that we, everyone says, the, this wall effect, this thing that you take is wall. I think we, we probably would say wall for this device, but I mean, because we are geekies, we know that it runs in Linux and this kind of thing, but uh, something that is really exciting, like cool, and that's it. Uh, so there's this, big challenge to make things simple and exciting at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, continue on this trend uh, to, to make the, the, our code base more compliant with well-known standards, for sure. 
Well, and just to finish here, uh, we decided uh, to, to make uh, the, the Hildonest uh, an upstream project. And what does this mean? This means that uh, the, the Hildonist won't be more like a MIMO specific uh, software, but something that MIMO uses as their solution for the user interface. Uh, and of course, this means that Hildon will have not. I'm talking not talking about Hildon desktop, but the full Hildon stack. Uh, will have its own uh, communities and, and, and specific efforts uh, for a full solution for user interface for mobile devices. And of course, we are trying to, in some sense, to to make it like a standard solution for that pur purpose. So any help is. Uh, is welcome. And as part of this upstream thingy, we decided to to move our infrastructure to, to GNOME. So this means that our subversion will be uh, the GNOME one, uh, and you will understand what I mean in, in the last slide. Uh, well, our, uh, the subversion will be the, the GNOME one, Bugzilla, mailing list, and so on. So it will be more integrated with the GNOME community, which is really cool because then we can get more contributors and, and so on. And in terms of release schedule, it's not clear for us. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things, details involved in these things, so we, we cannot say, uh, at least at this moment, that we will follow the GNOME schedule exactly. But for sure, in, in terms of the development process, it will probably be something very similar in terms of freezes and, and, uh, and how the, the, the community efforts should or be organized in this thing. So it will be probably something much more sane for a GNOME contributor to look at Hilda and say, okay, I, I know how to contribute, I know how, what to do. Because currently it's... Right. So I, 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 I heard that there is this Hilda on water here. So if you are interested in drinking a little bit of Hildon. So you can go get the Hildon desktop source code in this very friendly URL. <laughs> so I, I think moving to GNOME subversion will be really an improvement. Statistically <laughs> in this case it will be a really huge improvement. And if you want to use it, I think uh, that you have like Sardin, which is which takes the snapshots weekly out roughly weekly snapshots of our code base so that you, if you use MIMO you can basically add the repositories there and keep updating for the, with the latest stuff which is uh, an easy way to keep trying, testing and experimenting things there and in Ubuntu Mobile Edition I, if they have something running I think it will be like really interesting also to, to use it, contribute, test and so on so, that's it. Questions? <coughs> to know like okay this is this and this is this okay no details even it, it doesn't matter it's it's just completely user uh, community unfriendly if you want to translate it on desktop now if you get to do something you are a hero yeah so I mean basically we need to fix that I don't know when we are going to do that and, but I think it's it's clear that this is a problem, and it's it, it, this is not the only uh, anyway. Okay, thank you.